While in New York, Alan invited me to stop by for a visit to preview his latest book, a definitive piece on Ralph Lauren, looking at his life through his fashion brands. Come join me as we sit down with Alan Flesser to learn about this exciting new book. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. I'm excited to be back here uh, in uh, Alan Flesser's private office. He's invited us in uh, his inner sanctum to share with us uh, a special project, a book, a new book that he's been working on quietly for the last 12 years. So, uh, Alan, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to be here with you in New York. And, um, you know, I can't wait to learn about this new book that you've been writing. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for stopping by. Um, it's a big subject. Subject is Ralph Lauren. Wow. It's a fashion biography. I asked my friend at the time, Tom Wolfe, so how do I really, what do I call this? It's, it's a biography, but, so he said, it's a fashion biography. I said, okay, I don't know exactly what that is, but it sounds <laughs> good. Um, it's uh, 350 pages, uh, 150,000 words, and 360 or 70 photographs later. Um, it's about to be, it's in the process of being published and it's going to come out in the latter part of October. Yeah, and so this is a real seminal piece on Ralph Lauren. I mean, it's not just about the man, uh, but really, I mean, and especially kind of the perspective you bring is about his fashion empire and the influence that that's had, you know, really on American culture, right? right? It's, um, you know, in writing about Ralph, especially his beginnings in the 1960s, I, I realized that I had to give the reader a context in which to kind of understand and appreciate what he was doing since most of it had never really been done before. Mm -hmm. So I had to bring the reader up to speed in terms of what had happened to fashion, you know, prior to that, uh, so they could, you know, appreciate the larger picture. And the same thing in the women's wear. Previously, I've written four books about men's clothes um, and this is uh, a little beyond that scope because yeah. it of course discusses Ralph's menswear, it discusses his women's wear, it discusses his home business and then his actual homes themselves plus his cars and restaurants and things like that so its purview is you know yeah larger. Yeah and, and I mean you wrote the you know really the uh, the Bible on classic menswear I mean the style and the man and um, you know, that has influenced so many people. But, you know, in addition to that, I mean, you're a designer, and that's what you were doing really before you were writing. Right. And so having that background in design, you know, had, did that help you write this? Sure, of course. I think to be able to appreciate all of the design, you know, that's in Ralph's life. Well, and you really, you know, you know knew Ralph throughout his career. So, I mean, you've seen him, you know, really kind of evolve and, and develop in terms of his impact and influence on the industry. Uh, you know, I think for people of my generation, uh, I mean, it would be really hard to understand just how groundbreaking and uh, cutting edge Ralph was back in the right. 70s, right? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Ralph has <coughs> impacted um, or shaped the public taste level more than any other individual. And so the book attempts to, throughout it, to support that prove that thesis. And uh, so Ralph was always a kind of maverick, you know, doing things out on his own, paving new ways. Um, you know, he literally invented lifestyle merchandising or advertising. No one created a lifestyle around clothes and then showed the clothes inside of them. But he always felt that, you know, it wasn't the shirt or the jacket. It's the whole picture in the context of a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And um, as an example, uh, was at Bloomingdale's, his clothes were all over the store, all over the men's store. And so he asked the merchants there that he f really felt like he needed a shop uh, that had the um an umbrella which had all of his merchandise so his customer could go in and relax and, you know, look at the merchandise as it's as related to each other, yeah. as a collection. And they, like all merchants of those days, you had the you had the shirts in one area, ties in another area, suits in another area, jackets over there, sportswear if there was over there, 
all over the place. And it was all mixed from all the different designers. And it was mixed. So Ralph said to Bloomingdale's, um, you know, if you don't want to do it, I'm going to leave. Which, considering that was his, 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 his main store in New York, was a tremendously yeah. courageous thing to say. And they kind of backed oh, down. And they, so they opened the first men's boutique, you know, in a uh, shop and shop. Yeah, in a, in a shop and a shop. And then sometime after that, uh, Ralph opened the first uh, self standing uh, men's store with Jerry Magnin in uh, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And Ralph really was a branding genius. I mean, and yes. his ability to create kind of a halo brand, you know, that was incredibly aspirational. Right. Uh, that, um, you know, really supported this notion of lifestyle and luxury was, was uh, incredible. But then the, the, the trickle-down effect of that to the other kind of diffusion brands uh, had a huge impact on uh, Polo Ralph Lauren. Right. Ralph was the first to have a secondary line. You know, he had actually uh, lobbied, you know, all of the retailers to create, you know, their own Ralph Lauren areas, and, mm -hmm. you know, and then um, everyone was knocking him off, or, which is a, ultimately that the industry's uh, compliment uh, in terms of we like your things, but we're going to copy them and make them less expensively. So Ralph thought, you know, I should be doing this myself. So he started Chaps. Mm -hmm. And where did Purple Label come into this? I mean, you know, I think whenever I think of classic menswear, I think of Purple Label as really the standard. I mean, it was, you know, the greatest and really purest represent representation of just classic, timeless elegance. Right, because purple was a dye that was the most expensive dye, and it was associated with royalty and with kings and queens. So um, the idea, I don't know, actually I don't know whether that influenced you know, their selection of that particular shade, but um, purple does, you know, is really symbolic of, yeah. of the, the highest end, and yes, so you know, um, Purple Label is the uh, expression, Ralph's ultimate expression of, you know, menswear quality and luxury. Uh, I mean, one of the things that I've always appreciated about Purple Label is that, you know, the aesthetic and the proportions have largely been untouched for at least as long as kind of I followed Purple Label. And that really, you know, in a lot of ways kind of echoes some of the principles that you write about in your books. I mean, was that something intentional that Ralph, you know, did, I mean, was it a stand that he took and said, you know, this is my take on classic menswear and I'm not, it's not going to be influenced by fashion or trends? Well, I think, again, uh, this is someone who built a, a gigantic fashion business, international fashion business, based on the idea of, uh, you know, style as opposed to fashion. So Purple Label certainly is going to embody all of those um, qualifications. He's also completely absorbed with, you know, what's the right look of a, of a, of a vintage jean and things of that mm -hmm. sort. And that's a kind of large, you know, yeah. a design world, too. Yeah, I mean, kind of, you know, taking those principles, but then, you know, kind of inflecting it in such a broad spectrum uh, is, you know, really quite rare. And I guess, it, like what you say, really, it, it demonstrates a, a stronger and greater command over fashion and style than someone that can, you know, dress well in a business suit, and that's really all he knows how to do. Right. So the title is interesting, In His Own Fashion. Mm -hmm. So that has like several entendres, so to speak. Okay. I mean, Ralph actually never wanted to be in fashion. He wanted, never wanted to create clothes that were fashionable. What he wanted to do was create his own fashion, and by his own fashion he meant something that was stylish at the moment of its inception, but also stylish, you know, in 20 years. Mm -hmm. So, do you think Ralph ever received the credit that he deserved for his work? You know, I think along the way, I think he felt uh, perhaps that in America, anyway, the fashion journalist's job is to ferret out the new, you mm -hmm. know, the now, you know, what the happening. Ralph is never really focused on that. He's really focused on how to add to his customers already existing you know wardrobe one of the things i felt you know is so interesting about ralph is how he kind of almost designed uh, or built in that longevity into his pieces you know almost anticipating them becoming worn 
And it really kind of, to me, correlates to his sense of uh, aristocracy. I mean, you know, you know, British aristocracy, you know, new and worn was always desirable over, or old and Older. worn was right. always desirable over new and perfect. Right. And, um, you know, I, it just gave, gives such a texture to that lifestyle. Right. I mean, quality is supposed to get better, you know, as it's used. Mm -hmm. That's a, a definition of quality. So it's not supposed to deteriorate as it's used. So you have to build in, you know, when you're making something, it's going to be more expensive to build in that level of, of uh, maintaining, you know, quality. And Ralph, I mean, he really captured kind of Americana, like an American aesthetic, but he still drew a lot from British influence too. Yes. I mean, how, you know, how did he juggle those two you know, those two, you know, kind of juxtapositions. And then what was it at the end of the day that allowed this designer to, to better capture, you know, you know, American, you know, fashion better than any other designer really that's ever lived? Well, Ralph is undeniably the most successful American fashion designer in the history of fashion design. As I think the first chapter says, that I don't do shoulders, I do worlds. So he saw clothes as just part of the overall picture. So he built you know, his business around these kind of iconic lifestyles and aspirational lifestyles. You worked with Ralph extensively writing this book, didn't you? We've had, lo we've had lots of interviews. We've okay. had lots of interviews with Ralph. And I've interviewed all of his inner uh, you know, core of people who are a, really a testimony to the to Ralph, because a lot of the people that I've interviewed have been there for 30 or, in some cases, 40 years in the fashion business. Most well, he's put more people respect. into retail. Oh. Uh, you know, I mean, There's you know, the school of Ralph, you know, has absolutely. permeated retail at every level. Uh, and design. I mean, you know, and design. I mean, so many people have gone through the Ralph Lawrence School uh, and have come out better for it. Um, and he's just influenced the way people look at quality and taste. If just take away, the idea of take away, there's no Ralph Lauren for the last 40 years. I can't imagine what the fashion industry would look like, mm -hmm. frankly, without him. And um, I myself, who design most of the things that I wear, um, I own more things from Ralph than any other single designer, by far. Wow. Not even close. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you think, you know, having written the book and having worked so closely with Ralph, I mean, was there anything that was surprising to you or that was, you know, of a particular insight that it was profound? I didn't know that he invented the home business. I really, I didn't know that. Like I the mean, concept I, of a home business. Yeah. I mean, before Ralph in 1983, designers had their names on sheets or they had their names on a towel or a, a print was, you know, the new Bill Blast print. But nobody had an entire collection of home furnishings. It just wasn't done. Yeah. So this, of course, was a complete revolution to the home furnishings business who thought, what the hell is this fashion designer? Knows nothing about sheets and towels and whatever. What is he doing? Well, in no time at all, everybody was copying Ralph's mm. entire collection, the idea of it. Yeah. And uh, just... You know, this is just the men's menswear, yeah. menswear, and uh, everything that's been written about the men's uh, ending in purple label. Uh, this is the women's, which actually the first one is from couture to blue jeans, uh, salon to street. So I actually take you through a history of women's fashion leading up to the late '60s, Amazing. and then here's a combination of you know, cars and homes and the home business. So it's divided into three sections. Um, um, you know, this is the beginning of the menswear. And, you know, there's Prince Charles, who's a, a, a polo a customer. And it, it, it talks a little bit about, you know, the history, his, his beginnings, mm -hmm. uh, you know, growing up. Cute picture of Ralph. And you know, takes you all the way through the development of his men's business. Here's some of the. I mean, people don't think about Ralph for like, you know, all this Tyrolean thing. This is kind of like downtown Western, mm -hmm. 
But you see the way the clothes are put together. They're put together in very eclectic ways. You don't really see people, you know. Here's yeah, he really, I mean, he was, you know, he famously, what, mixed black tie with blue jeans and cowboy boots. Yeah, but, you know, the funny thing is the cowboy boots are classic. The Levi's 501s are classic. The dinner jacket is classic. And so, yeah, it takes someone with a little bit of creativity. Mm -hmm. So here's a, you know, quilted thing with a, this, this is 20 years ago, 25 years ago. Yeah, with like a airplane seatbelt or a race yeah. car seatbelt. Yeah. So anyway, so then it, 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 here's a couple of, oh, here's my favorite Fred Astaire picture ever, which I tried to get in Dressing the Man, which I couldn't get the rights for. Yeah. But <laughs> How'd you is, get it for this book? Oh, I finally tracked down. I had enough <laughs> enough time in between to kind of do some Find research. Find out who actually. This is and this is Slim Keith. Okay. She's one of the most iconically dressed women, um, one of these uh, socialites, but who had her own style and who was an influence. And so these are kind of his reference points. Uh, in, some in many yes, ways. yeah. Some of the inspire. I mean, this is. Can you imagine you can't get a good, even Brooks Brothers doesn't have a picture of Brooks Brothers in its heyday on the first floor when it was unbelievable. But this is an interesting picture of Ralph. Um, I mean, this is like taking Brooks Brothers to the next level, right? You see all of the, like, the, 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 the striped tie and the striped shirt and had a Brooks and tweeds put together and uh, Joffers and stuff like that, all kind of mixed together. All traditional things put together, but you're not seeing anybody put them together like that, mm -hmm. right? And so this is some of his influences as, this was from Esquire magazine. This is the, the owner of Paul Stewart. Um, this is a legendary guy, uh, Roland Melodondri, who was the place to get your clothes when Ralph started in business. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of vintage, you know, old, this is, you know, when the business started. And then, this is pretty actually interesting. This is a, a picture of Ralph, kind of, yeah, a picture of Ralph. So here he is in one of his Ferraris, which when Ralph first, Ralph had a, like a Porsche, and when someone offered him to want to drive one, he said, I don't really like red cars, because kind of flashy. But anyway, he learned very quickly to like red cars. So, oh, yeah, so here's his first car. His, here is him taking some leeway, so to speak, from that. Here's Ralph, as you see, kind of Western things mm -hmm. put together. And here's Ralph in a more kind of uh, modern, right? Mm -hmm. More sleek, more... Kind of casual aesthetic. Yeah. So anyway, it, it goes to, these are some of, when I talk about updated Brooks Brothers, this is really, Ralph, as I interviewed, tr you know Charlie Davidson of the Andover shop? Mm -hmm. He's the last, so I asked Charlie, what about Ralph? And he said, well, he saved the Ivy League. If there was no Ralph Lauren, there'd be no Ivy League dressing. It would have yeah. gone. And um, I mean, this is more Brooks Brothers than Brooks Brothers, right? And so now this goes in, this is more interesting for people who are more in the design world. This is, again, things that Ralph takes classics and kind of, you know, redoes them. So here's like, if you look at this, the way the clothes are pulled together, put together, shown as if they're kind of like so natural, but it's anything, I mean, in order to get this attitude, all of a sudden it makes you want to buy some khakis, because, yeah. you know, just the way it's, it's not just the product, it's the whole. And the texture of it all. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, uh, he, he did, you know, Gatsby, that was a big, big, big uh, stepping stone for him. These are my Western shirts actually from Double RL. And here's, now, this is Richard Merkin. This is the artist that you see in my showroom. Okay. Was, so this is Richard. This is, this is the, for me, the most interesting part. So here's how Ralph takes classics from the past and then ups, updates them. So here's Richard, the artist, in here. And then here's, like, a version of that, but done. It's f more fitted, right? The shapes are different. But the basic idea of dressing is like just pulled forward. Yeah, here's and the, the color palette similar. And here's the same suit uh, Ralph first did, let's say, kind of 
classic, etc. And then here's the suit kind of updated for a young guy. Same thing with this Farrell sweater. It's a Farrell done for, an, you know, in the 70s. And here's a way maybe, you know, a guy who likes more fitted clothes downtown would do that. Mm -hmm. And here's, um, you know, here's taking the polo shirt and kind of updating it, showing it in a way that makes it kind of modern. And, and my favorite almost is here's Ralph taking the classic polo um, coat and showing it like a, a prep would wear it or even a downtown guy with a motorcycle jacket. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you know, in order to make that come off, you've mm -hmm. got to know. And then here's kind of an interesting shot of Ralph with the way he, yeah. wore, you know, wear, wears clothes. And it's so much about how to wear clothes. And so the, here's the purple label. Um, and um, then, you know, Ralph formal wear. Ralph probably single-handedly has helped save the classic tuxedo from all of the, you know, all of the uh, designers kind of pecking at it to see what, what they can do to kind yeah. of, And know. even slippers, I mean. Yeah. I mean, I think I first learned of velvet slippers through Ralph Lauren. And then, then it goes to women's wear. Um, and as I said, there's a history here, um, uh, very interesting of what was going on in the world of, you know, women's wear just prior to Ralph coming on the scene. So, it's Jackie Kennedy, Bob, Bob Bridget Bardot. There's lots of pictures of a Saint Laurent opening, mm -hmm. the first boutique, which was groundbreaking. So it goes through the history, history, and then it you know goes um, into the, the the beginnings of Ralph's uh, uh, women's wear, which was very men's oriented. Here's Ralph as a as a young guy. I found this photo that the Lauren people had never even seen. It was in their archives. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, and um, then you know the, it goes all the way through Ralph's you know Western. groundbreaking Western wear, which no one had ever seen, to his English. Uh, this is a safari. Safari, and you know, and then it goes into his homes and uh, the home business. Yeah, and the homes are, you know. Yeah. I mean, this is the most complete work that has really ever been done on Ralph, and it'll probably right. be the last piece that's ever done on him. Well, I, I you know, I liked, I, I think it's going to be one of the most definitive. I don't know that it'll be the only, but yeah. here's, it ends up anyway with his cars in I Paris. Was, yes. Here's an American showing the Europeans um, what the best of, the, of their own product has been. Here's the last picture of Ralph in front of a McLaren, a, a McLaren, yeah. an LM McLaren, one of six made. Unbelievable. Well, thank you so much, and I can't think of a more fitting, you know, person to write this piece. And thank so, you. you know, we look forward to seeing the book come out. And yeah, uh, yeah thanks for having us. My pleasure. Thank you for coming. Yeah.